everyone. Welcome to the Do One Thing Well podcast. My name is David Hyatt. And the best way to think of this podcast is really as a research tool. If you are interested in brands and businesses and sort of individuals that do one thing incredibly well, you might find this super interesting. And and I, I kind of look at this as a, a way to try and unpack the um, secrets of these incredible you know businesses and brands and people and 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 try and work out you know this component of what what is it that actually they do incredibly well and yeah you know, and we sort of pick these um research projects because they've got us to utter these words of oh my gosh i wish i'd done that you know whether it's um a service or a product or you know you know literally you know somebody who's just you know done something incredible in the sporting field and so that's it really so we kind of um we're sort of we're sort of deep taking a, a deep dive into products and services and and you know performers that we just you know are fans of um the therabody actually started out as uh theragun and um and I sort of discovered it. I was reading the FT on Saturday and um, I saw that this person, you know, they asked that person, what is the one product, you know, what's your favorite gadget? And they said you know, the Theragun. And I went, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I mentioned it to Claire, my wife, and um, and she took note. And then lo and behold, one Christmas, I had one of these, you know, for myself. And and over Christmas, I didn't really pay much attention to it. And then after Christmas, you know, I'd gone running and and used it afterwards. And, and it was at that point I, I sort of became a fan of this thing. And and now, if I'm even if I'm taking it, if I'm going on holiday and I'm going to be running, I take it with me. If I'm going snowboard, snowboarding literally saved me because normally my muscles get so tight. Um, and I used it every day. So. So the excitement and the fandom that we bring to this thing, we're going to try and share with you today because we are literally fans of this product. I, you know, I, I try and buy this uh, as a present for um, people I care about. And so I am you know, generally interested in this thing. So what is it is the first thing. It's, uh, they describe it as... <laughs> Percussive therapy makes use of rapid, repetitive tapping motion of applied pressure perpendicular to the target area. It is believed the motion of intentional pressure and vibration will help stimulate the nervous system to release the lymphatic buildup. And that is why people feel um, better after this thing. And, and it does it incredibly incredibly well it goes 60 percent deeper than other massage tools uh, and that's why um this this thing is super popular and this is why you know it's you know it doesn't just have customers it has fans and it'd be good to always start these research products and in terms of like what is it that i learned from you know like doing the research into this and my key takeaways are you know as business owners and entrepreneurs we're always trying to like go what problem can we fix and and we try and fix other people's problem but sometimes actually you know we already have our own problems that could be fixed so so my key takeaway from this was he in essence um had to try and fix his problem because he was in pain and the other thing I learned was actually the first prototypes are almost always ugly. And, and we, we kind of like try and you know, beat ourselves up in terms of, you know, we've got this curse of perfection. Oh, this got to be better than this. We have to launch perfect. No, you don't. You, you have to go and build a prototype you know, and, and put it out there into the world and see if it actually works. And, and, and that's what one of the key learners that I learned from doing this research. The other thing I learned was actually what they sort of you know did incredibly well was they attracted you know like 
world-class sports people, world-class musicians. Um, and they became customers because the product was so good. And because the product was so good, these people didn't need a slight deck to be persuaded to become investors. They'd already experienced the product uh, and they were already convinced. And, and because they had high net worth, you know, their ability to go and invest into this um, you know, you know, product and company, you know, they were, they were literally fans already. Um, and that was a big thing for them. And as much as, you know, Instagram's having a hard time right now, and, and I give it a little beef because it's not quite what it used to be, but it definitely made this company go viral. Um, and I think that was really because of the, the high status, you know, world-class, you know, sports people that were using this you know, product to try and get themselves out of pain because they were pushing their body so much. Um, and I've got to count the times I say, um, so you can count and let me know. And I'm trying to get my um factor down. So the other key takeaway for me is, you know, like it's important for us as entrepreneurs and founders to have ideas. Um, and, but it's also equally important to protect those ideas and, 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 I definitely learned the importance of you know protecting your ideas from doing this research. So, so I thought that was you know pretty interesting, and so I think it's always interesting to do the key takeaways at the beginning because you might not even get to the end, so it's fine. Um, so this is Dr. Jason Versland, um, Norwegian, so I might be pronouncing that completely and utterly wrong. And in, he was a chiropractor and he had an accident on a motorbike in 2007, if my research is correct. And he found himself in sort of incredible debilitating pain and he went looking for a way to get out of pain and he didn't want to take tablets um, and he didn't find an answer. Um, so his motivation to go and start this company was to get out of pain. He was literally fixing his own problem. And, and I kind of love this, um, uh, this because <laughs> to me, it's, um, it might not be the most beautiful prototype in the world, but it's a really great example of the importance of starting. And this is literally a Makita jigsaw drill that he's converted into you know his first prototype and, and i literally love that and so like i said norwegian grew up on a farm so he was very practical uh, and he was just you know like you know he was just you know he went and got a doi tool to go and start and so and it's a really beautiful thing and and you know like this you know, if he fell off his bike in, you know, October 2007, you know, by January, you know, 2008, he'd built this thing because he couldn't find a way out of pain. He went looking for an answer. And if there was one, he wouldn't have started this company. So that was the time frame, really. So like falling off the bike, first prototype, not that long. Um, but what would follow from that is literally you know, sort of almost, you know, seven to eight years of struggle. Um, he was patient number one. Um, and if you think back to this time, iPhone, you know, one was first, uh, you know, being released. That gives you some you know, reference in terms of time. Um, and between 2008 and 2015, did sort of five different uh, versions and, but he describes it as eight to nine years of banging his head against the wall, being told no, um, like repeatedly, even being thrown out of locker rooms because this thing was making him so much nice. Even his dad just said, hey, you're a chiropractor. Why don't you just concentrate on being a chiropractor? You're a pretty damn good chiropractor. 
And he admits that he put this thing away, you know, at least three times where he'd you know, almost given up on it. And the thing that kept him coming back to this thing was every time he put this on another human being, he, he those people said, hey, I feel so much better. And because they were feeling so much better because he was taking them out of pain. And he said, all I've got to do is just make this product really well and get it out to more people. And he describes it as, you know, the idea had him. And, and the reason he didn't give up in the end was you know, it was almost a higher purpose to help other people out of pain. And I thought that was really interesting. So he, his, he had this deep purpose that helped him get through the sticky times where, you know, you know, seven to eight years is a long time to keep going when you're not getting any results. So, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, and, you know, so he was very persistent. Um, but it, so if we think about this, you know, like Jake Burton, like invented a new sport. So he invented snowboards. And, but in the same way, um, you know, Dr. Jason Bursland created this incredible new category. You know, there was no percussive massage therapy, um, vibrational tools until he invented one. So he was, you know, customer number one, but he was also the first one in this category. He invented this category. There was no category until he came along and did it. And, and so he was fixing his own problem, which happened to be a problem shared by many, many other people. And that's why he, it went on to be incredibly successful. Um, so I kind of love that aspect to it. Um, and I think in every business, uh, every walk of life, you know, it, there's always, you know, every Hollywood film, there's always a turning point. And, and so you had a visionary founder um, and who had been struggling for, you know, seven, eight, nine years by his own admission to try and get this thing off the ground and to be successful. And so, Fortunately for him, he met um, you know, Benjamin Nazarene, who was a successful investor, um, you know, knew how to scale businesses. And he was uh, trying to mentor you know, small businesses, and that's how they met. Um, and Benjamin became a fan of the Theragun because he had back pain. And when he used it, he took himself out of pain and, and actually became a fan then because he he also saw how incredible and remarkable this product was. So, so you know, visionary founder met visionary entrepreneur because um, a lot of the vision for the company of where it could go into the future has come from Benjamin. And so in a way, these are a little bit of a dream team because you know, you know, the visionary founder has met a visionary entrepreneur um, and Benjamin knew how to go and make this product you know, um, and deliver this product and actually scale this product. So they are this little dream team. Um, and I like this, uh, you know, that... Dr. Jason, you know, says, I didn't create it for athletes, even though athletes became its big, huge multiplier. You know, he created it for people who were like himself, in pain. And, you know, he was fixing his own problem that just happened to fix lots of other people's problem. Like Dr. Jason, you know, describes himself as a founder, inventor, but I also love this is, you know, chief well-being officer. And the interesting thing with athletes, like he, you know, like Dr. Jason found himself in pain because he fell off a motorbike, but athletes find themselves in pain each day because they push their body so hard. 
and and the reason they become such like ambassadors and fans of this you know like you know massage you know therapy tool was within two to five minutes it, it took them out of pain and so you know, that lymphatic you know like you know getting getting that to uh, relieve those muscles was an incredible thing for these you know, athletes all day they're pushing their body and suddenly this thing could take them out of pain no wonder they become the biggest you know fans of this product they literally you know like they literally you know each day go and work so hard and push their body um, into pain every day in order to be world class and so if you think that the one big turning point definitely you know Dr. Jason meeting Benjamin, definitely big turning point for this company. You know, founders need, you know, that business wisdom and business entrepreneurship, but also, you know, they need that vision as well. And they need to be able to go and scale their products, you know, like having the idea and actually making the idea happen at, di at sometimes two different scales. But the other um, key turning point was, you know, 2017 MBA finals. Um, and then what happens is, you know, like this. Suddenly, you know, the whole of America is watching the NBA finals. And then, um, you know, a coach is, you know, on, you know, Kiri Irvin is using this very strange tool to massage his back. Um, and that, you know, went incredibly viral for Theragun. That was a big turning point in suddenly getting the world's attention or America's attention at least um, onto this product and going, what the hell is that? And, you know, like I said, you know, like athletes, you know, put themselves into pain every day in order to be world-class. And, and, and pretty soon they found, you know, like athletes are always trying to find an edge. Um, and, you know, over an evening, they would go and use this tool and they suddenly go, oh my God, like the relief they got from it um, because, you know, they were, you know, you know, literally, you know, pushing their body to the limit every day. And, and lo and behold, you know, like, you know, they had all these world-class sports people using this product, not because they were being paid to, because they wanted to, because the part, product was, gets gets into the muscles 60 percent deeper than any other massage tool it was literally the best thing in the world at getting relief from pain and and so you, when you the lesson from that is if you go and build something incredible and remarkable it is you know amazing people are going to find you and use your product and and lo and behold you know, the really, you know, multiplier here is they went and told all their followers, these people had huge following um, that, you know, Theragun couldn't buy that following. And they went and told people and shared what they were doing to get out of pain. And that went viral. So that was really interesting. And, and so those turning points, you know, like finding these, incredible sports people using their products and lo and behold all their followers are going oh what they're using oh maybe i'll buy one of those too so that gave them incredible growth and you know in the key takeaways i mentioned that um you know you have to have ideas to separate yourself from other people in business but you also have to find ways to protect your ideas and so that can sometimes be a copyright weak law a trademark much stronger law yeah but also you know, like a patent uh, and patent is an odd thing because you have to go and tell the world how you did it and then it will protect you um, and that's why coca-cola has never had a patent because it doesn't want to tell the world why how it actually makes coca-cola um, even though it's a strong protection they rather people not know but so 126 patents globally 138 patents pending you know, they are a technology company that's trying to get you out of pain and i find that super interesting um and they also have to go and protect 
you know, their patents because, you know, like I said, you know, big companies with, you know, big deep pockets will um, infringe your patent knowingly um, and, and think that they can bully you into um, you know, submission. And, and so you have to go and take those people to court and you have the protection, your patent will protect you, but you have to then go and spend money to take these people to court. And, and they rely on the fact that you don't have enough money to go and, and take them to court. So, but, you know, Therabody have been very active in protecting their IP and um, it has successfully stopped 300 companies from selling, you know, products on Amazon that infringes patents. It's successfully sued um, you know, companies that have infringed on their patents. And recently they got $700,000 settlement from two companies and got a cease and desist. So, you know, have ideas, but definitely, definitely, you know, it's important to go and protect them. So this is what I was alluding to, you know, like with the world's, you know, world top sports people is, um, uh, you know, they would use the Theragun and and you know, and show their audience and their followers, um, you, know, you know, them using it. And, you know, these sportsmen were probably using it most on uh, Instagram. And so if you look at this, it's 967,000 followers on Instagram. And only 18,000 on Twitter, you know, Facebook, probably the same, Twitter um, and TikTok. So their number one multiplier to their brand and, you know, the viral um, nature of their business has been Instagram. And that's probably reflects the fact that these top sports people and top musicians use Instagram or have been using Instagram as their number one way to go and you know, inform their, their followers. And their followers literally saw, I don't know, Christian Ronaldo using a Theragun after a training session and they're going, what was he using? And, and that has you know, literally grown um, uh, the Therabody. So I find all that stuff pretty incredible i mean you know if you look at therabody today you know it had lots of years of struggle um and huge turning points and it's now probably close to you know quanto its website you know 600 employees you know sells in 60 countries it has 10,000 you know retail stores selling its product um which is pretty incredible um and it's been profitable since you know 2017 it's um you reported you know um growth from 2017 to 2020 was its growth in revenue was 2007 2742 percent it's doing pretty well um and and that's incredible and and so what is the future for um, you know, Therabody, is it just going to be you know, one product, even though that one product does one thing incredibly well? Um, and I think this is probably thanks to you know, Benjamin Nazarene's like, vision of you know, this thing is a technology company that's going to take you out of pain. And whether you're uh, an athlete or you know, you're working in an office and slumped over a laptop every day is, you know, you you know you need to you know, go and recover, repair, and replenish your body, and it's building these reset um, you know, mini centers in key areas where its customers are, and and I find them really interesting because it's a combination of like um, you know, cold therapy, um, heat therapy, oxygen therapy, red light therapy, light therapy, um, and they're really progressive um, and they're really like pushing the envelope in terms of you know well-being and, and i find that the future of this company is literally is you know they're investing a huge amount of money into research and development they're 
you know, if you look at how many patents pending they have, they are literally, um, you know, a technology company that is also this incredible well-being company, and, and they're using tech to help people, you know, repair themselves and take them out of pain. So I think, you know, like probably in conclusion, and almost every conclusion will probably be the same, is it, it turns out the secret source, you know, is never one thing to do one thing well, but it's always many, many things. And And if you think about, you know, this is a story of, you know, fixing your own problem. This is a story of not giving up. And this is a story of incredible persistence. This is an incredible story of how important it is to find a business partner who also knows how to scale the business, but has incredible vision as well. And this is a story of making a product so remarkably well that you attract some of the highest performers in the sporting world, in the music world. And because they love the product so much, they tell their fans, which then makes your company grow, you know, like, you know, so much faster than you could do by spending advertising dollars. And one of the key areas for me of learning is when you make a product so remarkable, um, that becomes your marketing. And so your marketing is your product, not just, you know, an advert that you have to pay to run. So I think, you know, Dr. Jason, you know, and Benjamin, I think you've done something truly special, a remarkable product. Um, and uh, and I've enjoyed learning uh, the whole backstory um, I loved, you know, it made me laugh just seeing the the prototype. Uh, and, I, and I know how important it is when you have this deeper purpose to keep going. And, you know, eight or nine, nine years of struggle is a long time. Uh, and most people, you know, won't even go through a year of struggle. So I kind of salute you, I praise you. And, um, and I hope everyone here has enjoyed, you know, this, you know, research. Um, I, I think there's a bunch of things to learn from this uh, company and, and these two amazing uh, people. Good job. Well done. See you next week. Do one thing well podcast. Over and out.